Travel alert, using the trail, you travel north, taking two hours to arrive, following the trail north, you reach a small chapel that's been heavily damaged, its front door is missing, fire has ravaged the building and much of the ceiling has collapsed. This is likely the way into the death crypt of Khaldun and you cautiously approach. Before you can enter the ruin, however, you will have to take care of the large group of undead that seems to be guarding the place. Your party is under attack. Threatening all of you are seven skeletons, four skeleton archers, four zombies, and three ghouls. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet uses turn undead, attempting to turn destroy all encountered undead skeleton number one is turned, skeleton number two is turned, Skeleton number 3 is turned, Skeleton number 4 is turned, Skeleton number 5 is turned. It's Oriana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 3, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus 5 to hit, Ariana hits ghoul number 3, doing 8 points of damage and defeating it. It's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus one and swings at ghoul number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a one which is, it's Karthus turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha uses turn undead, attempting to turn destroy all encountered undead skeleton number six is turned, skeleton number seven is turned, Skeleton Archer number 1 is turned, Skeleton Archer number 2 is turned, Skeleton Archer number Sainayers uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at zombie number 2, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 8, plus 5 to hit, Barthal hits zombie number 2. Eswin readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at zombie number 2, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 12, plus 6 to hit, Eswin hits zombie number 2, doing 10 points of damage and defeating it. Ghoul number 1 attacks Oriana with its claws needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 5, plus 2 to hit, Ghoul number 1 misses Oriana. Ghoul number 1, GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at ghoul number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a seven, plus five to hit, Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at ghoul number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a five, plus f it's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Red Fern readies his golden quarter staff plus one and swings at ghoul number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 2. Eswin readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at zombie number 1, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Eswin hits zombie number 1, doing 20 points of damage and defeating it. Ghoul number, ghoul number 1 attacks Oriana with its claws needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 13, plus 2 to hit, ghoul number 1 misses Oriana. Ghoul number 1 again attacks, zombie number 3 closes in on Eswin to attack. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 26 is rolled. Success. Barthal blends into the shadows, Hiding from all combatants and receiving a plus 4 to hit and potentially, Sainayers readies his mace plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 1, needing a 14 to hit. Kartha readies her quarter staff plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 1. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Janet's turn. Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 1, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll it. Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at zombie number four, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 12, plus four to hit. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at ghoul number two, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage. Zombie number four attacks Eswin with its long sword needing a 18 to hit. 
Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does dub, it's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 2, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 2. Arthal readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at zombie number 3, needing a 8 to hit, plus 4 due to hiding in shadows. Die roll is a 1. Saint Aeus readies his mace plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 2, needing a 14 to hit. Eswin readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at zombie number 4, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 18. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with Saint Aeus readies his mace plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 2, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 4. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 2, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus 1 and swings at zombie number 3, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 14, plus 4 to hit. GM note, after any remaining combat, click the take items button to grab any drop loot. Barthol readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at zombie number 3, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 9, plus 5 to hit. Barthol hits zombie number 3, doing 7 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 125 experience points. Clearing a path to the chapel, it does not take long to pass through the open doorway and into the damaged construction itself. The damage here within the small church is even more obvious, and you're surprised the structure is even standing. A dull orange glow from a pair of burning braziers casts a variety of dark shadows over everything, warning you that someone, or something, must dwell here to keep the braziers burning. While a search of the ruined chamber would likely be a waste of time, let's do a curiosity check on your hero to see if you notice anything unusual here within the chapel. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 13 was rolled. Success, studying the ruins, and the way everything lies about, you can deduce that a significant battle occurred here, likely the fight that led to Khaldun's original demise. Indeed, skeletal remains still lie about, deceased combatants who are non-animated and not a threat. What's that, back in the corner? Ariana asks, her elven eyesight keen even in the low light. Taking a look, your heroes discover a spiral staircase of stone leading down into inky blackness, you've found the entrance into the death crypt itself. Eswin looks to you and then nods, ready to lead the party forward and into certain danger. The burning braziers here provide enough light to see by. A dark, chilling spiral staircase leads down into the death crypt, while the front doorway will take the party back to the trail leading south toward the bandit camp about two hours away. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 5. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 5 hit points. Saint Aeus casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 3 hit points. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Travel alert! Using the stairway, you travel down, taking a few minutes to arrive, reaching the bottom of the stone spiral staircase, you emerge into a large, dark crypt, some 50 feet in diameter and certainly intimidating. Dusty bones litter the floor while large cobwebs stand everywhere, especially to the west. An imposing demonic fountain stands in the center of the tomb, while what appears to be a large, crumbling sarcophagus stands against the far northern wall. While paths lead away to the left and right, you will need to do a search of the chamber if you want to learn anything more.
Ordering your party to begin a careful search of the crypt, it takes less than a minute before a variety of shapes begin to stir on the floor. Keeping your distance, you watch, with little surprise as a diversity of undead stand to their feet and turn in your direction, another battle with the monsters is imminent. Your party is under attack. Threatening all of you are four skeleton archers, five zombies, four whites, and three crimson skeletons. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin readies his longsword plus one and swings at white number two, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus six to hit, Eswin hits white number two, doing eight points of damage and leaving it with one hit point. Skeleton, skeleton archer number four attacks Ariana with its short bow needing a 19 to hit. White number two attacks Eswin with its claws needing a 18 to hit. Die roll is a 11, plus three to hit. Zombie number four closes in on Eswin to attack. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet uses turn undead, attempting to turn destroy all encountered undead skeleton archer number one is turned, skeleton archer number two is turned, skeleton archer number three is turned, skeleton arch- Kartha uses turn undead, attempting to turn destroy all encountered undead zombie number one is turned, zombie number two is turned, zombie number three is turned, white number four attacks Janet with its claws needing a 18 to hit, die roll is a 16, plus 3 to hit, white number 4 hits Janet, nearly level draining her permanently, needing a 8 or greater, Janet rolls a 12 and saves versus death ray or poison. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at white number 1, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 18. Redfern casts Phantasmal Force on white number 2, horrifying it for 5 points of damage for 5 minutes, needing a 16 or greater, white number 2 rolls 8 and fails versus spells. White number 2 has been defeated. It's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? St. Ayers uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Bart Hall's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 76 Crimson Skeleton number 3 closes in on St. Ayers to attack. White number 3 attacks St. Ayers with its claws needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at white number 1, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Ariana hits white number 1, do Arthur casts Spiritual Hammer on white number 3, bashing it for 6 points of damage for 5 minutes. It's Janet's turn. What do you- Janet casts Spiritual Hammer on white number 3, bashing it for 3 points of damage for 5 minutes. It's Bart Hall's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 16 is rolled. Success. Barthol blends into the shadows, hiding from- It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern casts Magic Missile on Crimson Skeleton number 3, striking it with a Magic Missile for 8 points of damage. Crimson Skeleton number 3 has been defeated. White number 3 attacks St. Aetius with its claws needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 3 to hit, white number 3 hit, it's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? St. Aetius casts Spiritual Hammer on white number 3, bashing it for 6 points of damage for 5 minutes. White number 3 has been defeated. Crimson Skeleton number 2 attacks Eswin with its short sword needing a 18 to hit. Die roll is a 19, 
plus zombie number four attacks s win with its longsword needing a 18 to hit die roll is a 12 plus two to hit zombie number four misses s win it's s win's turn what do you want him to do s win readies his longsword plus one and swings at zombie number four needing a 12 to hit die roll is a three plus six to hit s win misses zombie number four zombie number five closes in on saint Aetius to attack it's red fern's phantasmal forces turn what do you want it to do red fern directs his phantasmal force at crimson skeleton number one horrifying it for three points of damage and leaving it with sep gm note a new combat round has begun Redfern casts magic missile on Crimson Skeleton number 1, striking it with a magic missile for 8 points of damage. Crimson Skeleton number 1 has been defeated. It's Saint Ayers' spiritual hammer's turn. Saint Ayers directs his spiritual hammer at zombie number 5, bashing it for 3 points of damage. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at white number 4, needing a 15 to hit. Saint Aetius readies his mace plus one and swings at zombie number five, needing a 12 to hit. S Win readies his longsword plus one and swings at zombie number four, needing a 12 to hit. Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at zombie number four, bashing it for four points of damage and defeating it. It's Ariana's turn. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at zombie number five, needing a 12 to hit. It's Red Fern's phantasmal forces turn. What do you want it to do? Red Fern directs his phantasmal force at Crimson Skeleton number 2, horrifying it for 1. Janet directs her spiritual hammer at Crimson Skeleton number 2, bashing it for 2 points of damage and leaving it with. Arth readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at white number 4, needing a 11 to hit, plus 4 due to hiding in shadows. Die roll is a 12, plus 5 to hit and does triple damage. Barthol hits white number 4, doing 21 points of damage and defeating it. It's Karthus' turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at Crimson Skeleton number two, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a eight, plus four to hit. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at Crimson Skeleton number two, needing a 13 to hit. Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at Crimson Skeleton number two. Arthal readies his short sword plus one and swings at Crimson Skeleton number two. Saint Aetius readies his mace plus one and swings at Crimson Ske- Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at Crimson Skeleton number two. Janet directs her spiritual hammer at Crimson Skeleton number two, bashing it for four points of damage and leaving it with three hit points. It's Saint Aetius' spiritual hammer's turn. Saint Aetius directs his spiritual hammer at Crimson Skeleton number two, bashing it for two points of damage and leaving it with one hit point. Crimson Skeleton number 2 attacks S Win with its short sword needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage. Crimson Skeleton number 2 hits S Win. It's Red Fern's phantasmal forces turn. What do you want it to do? GM note, after any remaining combat, click the take items button to grab any drop loot. Red Fern directs his phantasmal force at Crimson Skeleton number 2, horrifying it for 4 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 211 experience points. I hate skeletons that can regenerate. S Win curses, referring to the crimson skeletons just defeated. What other horrors are in store for us here? Necromancy can do that, Kartha responds. Likely the result of this Kaldun we're here to destroy. Now free to search the chamber. You notice that some sort of black liquid is regurgitating within the demonic fountain nearby, and that the closed sarcophagus looks slightly ajar. Massive spider webs dominate the hallway leading away to the west, while a tall pile of rubble, perhaps from a cave-in or ceiling collapse, blocks the corridor to the east. Somewhat surprised to find the sarcophagus slightly ajar, the party readies itself for combat again as S-Win pushes the cover aside, fully expecting something, 
even the necromancer Kaldun himself, to leap out and attack. Instead, a lone human meekly rises from within the tomb, the young man scared half to death. Dressed as if about to go to bed and shaking like a leaf, the human looks to you as if seeing a ghost, his eyes as wide as they can be and his fear so strong you can almost taste it. Who, are you? The timid stranger asks. We could ask the same thing, Eswin replies, lowering his guard. The undead, kidnapped me one night, the fearful human begins. I was brought to this horrid place. I think they wanted to make a monster out of me. You must be one of the bandits stolen in the night, Ariana responds, holding out her hand to help the nearly naked man from out of the sarcophagus. What are you doing here? They brought me to a chamber, somewhere in that direction, the human recalls, pointing toward the east. There were others, too. I escaped, and I've been hiding here since. Sisla smiles on you, Sainadir says, happy to have rescued the man. What can you tell us of this place? There is another tomb, a sepulcher, where the kidnapped are being turned into undead. The man replies, still quite fearful. Into undead. Please, help me get out of here, now. The way back is safe, Eswin informs, pointing toward the spiral staircase to the south. Climb the stairway, escape through the doorway and run like hell back to camp. The man stares at Eswin, his face blank as if he hasn't heard a word at all. Let's do a spirit check on your hero and see what happens. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 8 was rolled. Success. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, offering some words of encouragement, you're able to convince the young man that he can indeed flee the death crypt and make it back to the bandit camp on his own. The barely dressed soldier nods, then dashes for the spiral staircase beyond, out of sight a minute later. The gurgling water from the demonic fountain continues to disturb the silence. Besides the stone spiral staircase leading up to the south, you can either travel west toward a large collection of spider webs or east toward all the rubble on the floor. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. You've discovered a small but well-crafted stone fountain, black in appearance and carved to represent a demonic spirit. Water seems to magically rise from within the center of the construction, reaching a height of about 10 feet before cascading back down upon itself. Travel alert, using the stairway, you travel up, taking a few minutes to arrive, the burning braziers here provide enough light to see by. A dark, chilling spiral staircase leads down into the Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 7 hit points. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on St. Aetheus. St. Aetheus casts Cure Light Wounds on Janet, healing her for 2 hit points. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Travel alert, using the stairway, you travel down, taking a few minutes to arrive, the gurgling water from the demonic fountain continues to disturb the silence. Besides the stone spiral staircase leading up to the south, you can either travel west toward a large Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel west, taking a few minutes to arrive, following the dark hallway west, you quickly encounter large, sticky spider webs, some of which span from floor to ceiling 30 feet above. Through the webs, you can see that the hallway ends with a big stone door, currently closed. Naturally, you won't know more unless the area is given a decent search. 
Searching the hallway leading to the stone door to the west does not reveal much, until several giant black widow spiders descend from the ceiling to attack. Your party is under attack. Menacing your entire party are five giant black widow spiders. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number five, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus five to hit, Ariana hit, Saint Aeus readies his mace plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing, needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a two is rolled. Success. Arthal blends into the shadows, Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is, Eswin readies his long sword plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing a 14 to hit. Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, giant black widow spider number two attacks Eswin with its bite needing, giant black widow spider number three attacks Eswin with its bite needing, GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is roll, Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing a, Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing a four, Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a four, plus four to hit, Kartha misses giant black widow spider number one. Giant black widow spider number two attacks S win with its bite needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus 3 to hit, giant black widow spider number 2 hits Eswin, incapacitating him, needing a 7 or greater, Eswin rolls a 1 and fails versus death ray or poison. Giant black widow spider number 2 further damages Eswin, biting him for 4 points of damage and defeating Eswin. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? St. Aeus readies his mace plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number one, needing a 14 to hit. Arthal readies his short sword plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number three, needing, giant black widow spider number four attacks Ariano, it's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first. Redfern binds the wounds of Eswin, returning his hit points to zero and stopping his bleeding. It, needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 96 is rolled. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number three, needing a, Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number two, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 15. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want? St. Aeus casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 9 hit points. Ja it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at giant black widow spider number 2, needing a 14 to hit. Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus 1 and swings at giant black widow spider number 3. Eswin readies his long sword plus 1 and swings at giant black widow spider number 3, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 2. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting, Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number three, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus five to hit, Janet hits giant, Redfern binds the wounds of Ariana, returning her hit points to zero and stopping her bleeding. Eswin readies his long sword plus one and swings at giant black widow spider number three, needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 38 is rolled. Success. Giant Black Widow Spider number 4 attacks Eswin with its bite need, it's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? St. Aeus readies his mace plus 1 and swings at Giant Black Widow Spider number 4, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, 
Saint Aetius hits giant Black Widow Spider number 4, doing 20 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 125 experience points. With the spiders put down, you can now turn your attention back to the stone door that bars any further progress west. The heavy stone door is reinforced with rusted iron bands and set into an ornate archway. A large brass keyhole is visible above the door's pull rings, while an inscription above the keyhole reads find your key in the heart of fire. It's locked, S. Wynn announces after giving the door a push. The door is quite sturdy, we're not getting past it without some sort of key. A thief can try picking the lock, of course. Magic, such as a knock spell might suffice as well, or even a standard skeleton key that can unlock doors like this. Let's have your hero try a curiosity check to see if you recognize anything further. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 4 was rolled. Success, inspecting the locking mechanism, you suspect that a very special key is required to open this door, likely a key hidden somewhere else within the death crypt. If you can't pick the lock, don't have a skeleton key in your inventory or don't have any appropriate magic, you will need that special key to continue. It appears we need to find the key within some sort of fire, Redfern suggests, a logical statement. We're probably not meant to go past this point without it. So, if you don't have a way to get past the door currently, you will need to find something appropriate, likely located back to the east within the death crypt. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 10 hit points. Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel east, taking a few minutes to arrive. Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel east, taking a few minutes to arrive, approaching from the west, you make your way to a large pile of stone and rubble scattered across the floor, blocking your way to a small hallway leading north. From the look of things, you can't tell if several massive pillars here tumbled and fell or whether the ceiling itself has partially collapsed. Either way, getting past all the debris is going to be challenging. Instructing your heroes to clear a path forward, you spend nearly an hour moving the debris, the larger rocks quite difficult and requiring all of your combined strength. Fortunately, nothing jumps out at you from the shadows and attacks, and soon, enough of the floor here is cleared for you to continue east and toward a small hallway leading north. Then, without warning, a small section of the ceiling begins to collapse again. Sorry, Janet but your party will need to do a combined dexterity check to determine whether anyone is injured by the collapse. Needing a 13 or less from your heroes, a 1 was rolled. Success, fortunately, everyone within the party manages to dodge the larger rocks and debris, escaping what was either a simple accident or a very clever trap. Continuing forward, you reach a small corridor leading down 10 feet. Following the hallway, you find a bloodied altar sitting amidst a gloomy, cramped charnel house. Atop the altar is a wax idol carved into the shape of a black dragon, perhaps three feet tall and rather monstrous. Racks of bleached bones line the walls here, while beetles scuttle across the stone floor. You feel a chilly draft, but you can't tell if it's from the idol perhaps or just from the walls and floor. This small, darkened stone altar is generally featureless. It is, however, covered in blood, and the blood appears to be fresh. The black dragon idol naturally attracts your curiosity and you move toward it. As you do, however, you hear what sounds like strange whispering. Stopping to listen carefully, 
the whisper seemed to follow some sort of rhythmic cadence, almost as if a group of clerics were reciting a hymn in the far distance. The experience is eerie and you're not sure what to think. Indeed, let's have Redfern try a saving throw versus spells and we will see what happens. Needing a 12 or greater to save against spells, a 6 was rolled. Failure, no, sorry, Redfern does not notice anything here. The idol commands your curiosity, you really want to examine it physically, but you're also not sure if you should get too close. How do you want to proceed, choose an option, use remove curse scroll on the idol, destroy the idol, search the idol. Your party uses a scroll of remove curse, object on the idol, losing it from your inventory. Well played, using the scroll was definitely the thing to do. Each hero earns 143 experience points. Kartha has gained a new energy level and receives 5 new hit points and 1 new spell, click the spells button to assign the new spell. You no longer hear the strange whispering emanating from the idol, and you hope that whatever curse may have been laid upon the object is now negated. Indeed, you should see if you can somehow open the idol and look for anything within. Cutting into the idol, you find a strange iron key, which you place into your backpack. There also appears to be a few other small items within the ruined idol, click the take items button to recover them. It's getting even colder here. Ariana announces, the young elf starting to shiver. Do you feel that? Trespassers. A wicked, monstrous voice then calls throughout the small chamber, filling all of you with dread. Death to you. From out of the far wall above the bloody altar come a small group of wraiths, each of them reaching out in order to drain your energy levels. Your party is under attack. Menacing your entire party are four wraiths. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 12 is rolled. Success. Barthol blends into the shadows, hiding from all. Kartha uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. Wraith number 1 attacks Ariana with its touch needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 4 to hit, Wraith number 1 hits Ariana, level draining her, needing a 8 or greater, Ariana rolls a 6 and fails versus death ray or poison. Wraith number 1 further damages Ariana, touching her for 4 points of damage and leaving Ariana with 7 hit points. Wraith number 2 attacks Ariana with its touch needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 4 to hit. Wraith number 2 hits Ariana, level draining her, needing a 8 or greater. Ariana rolls a 1 and fail. Wraith number 3 attacks Eswin with its touch needing a 18 to hit. Die roll is a 3, plus 4 to hit. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at wraith number two, needing a 15 to hit. Du Redfern casts phantasmal force on wraith number two, nearly horrifying it, needing a 15 or greater, wraith number two. Saint Aetheus uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Eswin's turn. Eswin readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at wraith number 3, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 6 to hit, Eswin hits wraith number 3, doing a GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at wraith number 1, needing a 11 to hit, plus 4 due to hiding in shadows. Die roll is a 20 which is Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at wraith number 1, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 18, 
plus Redfern casts magic missile on Wraith number 1, striking it with a magic missile for 5 points of damage. Wraith, S. Win readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at Wraith number 3, needing a 15 to hit. Janet uses a vial of holy water on Wraith number 3, wounding it for 6 points of damage. Wraith number 3 has been defeated. It's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha casts spiritual hammer on Wraith number 2, bashing it for 2 points of damage for 5 minutes. Wraith number 2 attacks Oriana with its touch needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus 4 to hit, Wraith number 2 hits Oriana, nearly level draining her permanently. It's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? St. Ayers casts Spiritual Hammer on Wraith number 2, bashing it for 3 points of damage for 5 minutes. Wraith number 4 attacks Eswin with its touch needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus 4 to hit, Wraith number 4 hits Eswin, level draining him, needing a 7 or greater, Eswin rolls a 1 and fails, GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is roll. Janet casts cause light wounds on Wraith number 2, wounding it for 9 points of damage, needing a 5th. Redfern casts magic missile on Wraith number 2, striking it with a magic missile for 6 points of damage. Wraith number 2 has been defeated. Arth already his short sword plus 1 and swings at Wraith number 4, needing a 15 to hit. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 8 hit points. Wraith number 4 attacks Eswin with its touch needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 4 to hit, Wraith number 4 hits Eswin, level draining him, needing a 7 or greater, Eswin rolls a 4, it's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? St. Ayers readies his mace plus 1 and swings at Wraith number 4, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 10. St. Ayers directs his spiritual hammer at Wraith number 4, bashing it for 2 points of damage and leaving it with 11 hit points. It's Kartha's spiritual hammer's turn. What do you want it to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at Wraith number 4, bashing it for 4 points of Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at Wraith number 4, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 9, plus 4 to hit, Ariana misses Wraith number 4. It's Red Fern's turn. Red Fern readies his golden quarter staff plus 1 and swings at Wraith number 4, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an St. Aetius readies his mace plus 1 and swings at Wraith number 4, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus 5 to hit, St. Aetius hits Wraith number 4, doing 7 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 183 experience points. The wraiths are dispatched and the utter coldness within the chamber dissipates. Quiet returns to the tiny hallway, you've done all you can do here. You can leave the hallway and either go west back to the dark crypt or head east toward the antechamber and explore the area where the human you just released said he had been taken captive.
Janet nods and takes everything from within the immediate area. Travel alert, returning to the damaged chapel, you take 20 minutes to arrive, the burning braziers here provide enough light to see by. A dark, chilling spiral staircase leads down into the death crypt, while the front doorway will take, your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. GM note, it's dark here. Click the use item button to select a source of light, travel alert, using the doorway, you travel south, taking a few moments to arrive, the tiny path here leads north toward the death crypt of Kaldun as well as back to the bandits camp to the south. Travel alert, using the trail, you travel south, taking 10 minutes to arrive, the road here offers access to the bandit camp, the same road leading south back to Nace about a week's march away. The trail leading north toward the death crypt is also available. GM alert, at least one of your heroes is dying of hunger and or thirst. Travel alert, using the road, you travel southwest, taking a week to arrive, the road here leads northeast to southwest, forward toward the road west to blue a week's march away or back to Nace if so desired. Travel alert, using the road, you travel south, taking an hour to arrive, just outside of Nace to the west, you can either return into the city or take the road northeast, which leads out of Hope Air and toward the Cyan Desert to the northwest and the Nararian Plains to the northeast. Travel alert, using the road, you travel west, taking 20 minutes to arrive, still standing just outside the Nasian main gate, you can go west into the heart of the city or return east back through the gate and out of Nace. Travel alert, returning to the jeweler, you take a half hour to arrive, you're free. Janet sells one green stone and receives the equivalent of eight gold. Janet sells one bloodstone and receives the equivalent of Janet sells one garnet and receives the equivalent. Janet sells one alexandrite and receives the equivalent. Janet sells one aventurin and receives the equivalent of 60 gold pieces. Travel alert, returning to the Sisland church, you take a half hour to arrive, although Feria is no longer here, several clerics and acolytes await further requests for their healing and restorative services. In fact, if anyone in the party lost levels recently, you can receive magical restoration here. Eswin does not have enough coin. Try something else.
S. Win lost five platinum pieces. In return, he is healed of all afflictions. Although Feria is no longer here, several clerics and acolytes await further requests for their healing and restorative services. In fact, if anyone... Ariana lost 10 platinum pieces. In return, she is healed of all afflictions. Although Feria is no longer here, several clerics and acolytes await further requests for their healing and restorative services. In fact, if anyone in the party lost levels recently, you can receive magical restoration. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on herself, healing her for 5 hit points. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 10 hit points. St. Aetheus casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 6 hit points. Travel alert, using the road, you travel east, taking 5 minutes to arrive, now, about your rooms. I charge just one silver piece for the lot of you. GM note, Janet lost 10 copper pieces, you can sleep here as long as you wish and otherwise take care of yourselves. Once you leave, however, you will have to pay another silver piece to rent another room. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 9 hit points. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Travel alert, returning to the merchant, you take 15 minutes to arrive, the merchant awaits for you. Janet lost 10 gold pieces. In return, Janet lost two platinum pieces. In return, Ariana lost two platinum pieces. In return, Ariana lost two platinum pieces. In return, she receives 10 
Barthol lost two platinum pieces. In return, Barthol lost two platinum pieces. In return, Eswin lost two platinum pieces. In return, he receives. Eswin lost two platinum pieces. In return, Kartha lost two platinum pieces. In return, Kartha lost two platinum pieces. In return, Redfern lost two platinum pieces. In return, he receives 10 water skins. Redfern lost two platinum pieces. In return, he re Saint Aegis lost two platinum pieces. In return, Saint Aegis lost two platinum pieces. In return, he receives ten water skins. Travel alert, using the road, you travel southeast, taking 15 minutes to arrive, still standing just out. Travel alert, using the road, you travel east, taking 20 minutes to arrive, just outside of Nace to the west, you can either return into the city or take the road northeast. GM note, it's dark here. Click the use item button to select a source of light. Travel alert, using the road, you travel northeast, taking an hour to arrive. The road here leads northeast to southwest, forward. Travel alert, returning to the trail north toward Death Crypt, you take several days to arrive. The tiny path here leads north toward the Death Crypt of Caldun as well as back to the bandits camp to the south. Travel alert, using the trail, you travel north, taking two hours to arrive, the burning braziers here provide enough light to see by. A dark, chilling spiral staircase leads down into the death crypt, while the front doorway will take the party. Travel alert, returning to the black shrine, you take 20 minutes to arrive, quiet returns to the tiny hallway, you've done all you can do here. You can leave the hallway and either go west. 